welcome back to the Music Play Minutes podcast. This episode is also available as a webinar with a handout and a PD certificate. All extra resources, including visual examples mentioned in this episode, can be found at workshops.musicplay.ca. Happy New Year and welcome back. Denise Gagne will be your guide through teaching recorders in the classroom. From handy teaching tips to cost-saving ways of making recorder karate belts, she has a wealth of information just for you. Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to 2023. This is our first webinar of the season. I believe we are going to do one a month until June, and so you won't be... Um inundated with too much of Denise. But today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite, favorite things, which is playing the recorder. I know people hate it. I love it. It's one of my very favorite instruments. Um, and teaching it is going to be really fun this year because I have twin granddaughters who are nine. Last year when they were in grade three, I went into their classroom because my singing voice is kind of broken. I took a recorder along and was teaching, uh, was using the recorder to play songs by rote. And they invited me to come back and teach them recorder this year. So that is the plan starting in February when I actually get back to home. I'm going to be teaching my fourth grade twin granddaughters recorder. And this is going to be interesting. They're up in Edmonton today. They couldn't be here as my guinea pigs. So I have as my guinea pigs Serge <laughs> and Brian who are on the music play team. When you call support, you get Brian. When you want a French translation, you get Serge. And neither have played recorder before. So they are going to be my students today as I take you through um, what we are, what I suggest we do as, um, as recorder teachers. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go full screen with this PowerPoint for a few minutes. And this is a create with recorder because of course we always want kids creating in music class. So pick any one of these 12 things that drive you crazy because they all drive me crazy. And I've got some suggestions for all of them. So kids playing when you're talking. If you play before I say, I'll take your instrument away. But on these recorders, I just pop the top off and I leave them this part of the recorder that they can do the fingerings and they can follow along, but they can't make any noise. Um, we actually have that as a poster. If I pop ahead and this particular poster comes from the Music Rules poster pack and I have to say, I really like this poster. It's um, it's good. I would absolutely display that in my classroom before I started teaching. Um, the other thing that you can do with kids is to have them play long tones on the recorder. What do you want to do when somebody hands you an instrument? You want to play it. So we're going to hand Brian and Serge a recorder. They know nothing about this. <laughs> and we're going to play long tones without putting any fingers on because I haven't taught them that yet. So we're going to hand out these recorders. Mm -hmm. And actually, before I do, I'm going to show you what I did. I don't think this is even in my presentation, but I've put Serge's name on the case and I've written his name on an address label. Because when you have four or five classes that are doing recorder at the same time, things get left behind. And so if the recorder gets left behind, it's stickied with an address label. If the case gets left behind, it's stickied with his name. So you get to keep that. And then Brian is going to get his. This is our house brand, only available in Canada. It's not available in the USA, but our Canadian customers order the package with the recorder and the student book for $10. And if you order 10 or more, we pay the tax and the shipping. So for these long tones, I'm just going to ask you to hold the recorder with your left hand at the top and your right hand at the bottom. And we're going to see if you can hold it to 12 seconds, just blowing gently. Ready? Go. Two, three, four, five, six. Gently, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 was no problem. Okay, let's see if you can go to 20 and gently, gently. Um, this is actually comes later, but I'm gonna show you now because I heard a little bit louder than I wanted. One of the things that I use for teaching the children to blow gently is bubble stuff. And if I don't blow gently, it doesn't make a bubble. Oh, I got one. Okay, I made one. But if I blow really gently, 
it makes bubbles. If I blow too hard, what happens? Nothing. 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 They just, nothing. Um, another way that you can uh, talk to kids about how to play the recorder, have them blow through a straw. Plastic straws are now illegal in Canada, but um, you can get thin paper ones, I think. And it gives the idea, again, of blow it, blowing through a really small bore. So as gently as you can, let's go to 20 seconds. Okay, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. They're playing. They're getting that out of their system so that they're not going to play while I'm talking. Um, then we want to have kids echo me. So I'm going to teach them how to put their hands on the recorder. Important thing being left hand at the top. And again, I'll talk about this more, but I've got a little bracelet that says left on top. So if kids forget, I give them a little bracelet or a scrunchie or a silly band. And I want the left hand thumb to cover the tone hole at the back. And I want the first finger to cover the top hole. And I scan the room and I can see they both got left hand at the top. Right hand thumb should just hold it up gently. And this is so that when you get down to the F that you your, your hand is in place. So just hold gently with the thumb. So when you've got thumb and one finger on, it makes the note B. Let's do that for eight seconds. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many of your grade fours sound that good on the first note? I'm impressed. <laughs> nice job. Um, the other thing, I should be talking less and playing more. That always engages the kids. If you actually find out how much you talk in your class, it might... Um, it might make you reconsider how, how many things you say to your kids. So kids overblowing, I use the bubbles, warm air, cold air. Hold your hands up in front of your mouth and blow cool air. Now blow warm air. Which is gonna sound better on the recorder? Hot air. Absolutely, hot air. Um, I'm gonna model poor and good sound. Is the poor sound? Is the good sound. Which one? sounded better one or two two not i'm not going to ask them which one do you like better because there's always going to be one kid in the class that's going to say i want i like number one better but if you ask them to rate it and give them criteria yes um talk softly and if you're using accompaniment tracks play the tracks softly and that will encourage the kids to not overblow so much squeaky notes especially on low d and low c When you start to hear that kind of sound, they're not covering completely. So I encourage the kids to cover the holes with their fingerprint, not the tips of their fingers. So if they've ever seen fingerprinting on CSI, they cover the, the holes with their fingerprints. And I've always taught kids to press firmly if they're having troubles covering all the holes. So try covering all the holes with your left hand, one, two, three, with your right hand, one, two, three, four. And then press really tightly and lift away. And can you see circles on your fingers? Yep. We call those recorder warts. And <laughs> if you see recorder warts, you've probably got the holes covered. Now, the thing that I find really valuable is to warm up every class on B-A-G-F-E-D-C. That's what I just played. This is a German fingering recorder, not a Baroque fingering recorder. On a Baroque fingering recorder, I have to play my F like this. Not just one finger, but an additional two underneath. It is so hard for our little third grade and fourth grades to do that. If you order German fingering recorders, the F becomes easy. It's the same F now as on a flute as on a clarinet high register, as on a saxophone. So why would we ask kids to do the forked F fingering 
of oboe and bassoon when they're only in third grade. I wouldn't start a third grader on bassoon or oboe, so I start my third and fourth graders on German fingering recorders. And they are available. <laughs> I have to say, I've done enough workshops in Canada. Most of Canada uses German fingering recorders, and most of the US hasn't had me yet, so they don't know. But this is the warm up that I do with the kids, and I do it, I call it rote note. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna start with that B that we know, and we're gonna add one finger at a time. Brand new beginners here, and they sound pretty darn good. Okay, so let's do the B. Now add a finger for A. Add one for G, don't rush, take it easy. Now one more finger, and see how nice that F sounds? German fingering, add another finger, and they're hanging in there, they're covering those holes. Low D, and then low C. And again, that is extraordinary. We've got adult learners as opposed to eight-year-old learners, um, so they're getting better sound. But that that is doable. This is my beginner class from about 20 years ago. I don't like the way they're holding their recorders because their right hand's not underneath it, but every single child in this video has left hand at the top. Not a one is wrong. Now you're starting to hear the squeaks, but to, honestly, I think they did pretty well. And that was about after maybe two weeks of instruction. So we have a lot of hand reversals on the recorder, and this comes up every year on Music Play Teachers Group on Facebook, that I have a child that insists they have to do it right hand at the top. If you do that BAG exercise, I just can't do it with the incorrect hand at the top. Has to be left hand at the top. And you really need to reinforce that, scan the class for it all the time. And if they are persistent, I will get them a silly band or a scrunchie. Um, if I have a child that's really struggling, can I borrow your left hand? <laughs> okay, so on his left hand, I am going to outline an L. And that is to help him remember that left hand goes at the top. The left hand is the one that makes the L, but you've got kids with dyslexia in there and they don't remember it anyways. But if I put it on with a marker, probably Sharpie's not the best. I should probably use washable marker. Um, it will help them to remember that left hand goes at the top. And if parents complain, say, look, flutists, clarinets, saxophones, bassoons, oboes, every woodwind instrument in the world has left hand at the top. Um, kids who forget the recorder at home. Most schools in Canada will send an order form home with the kids and then the kids will buy their own recorder. That happens most often. I know that's not as frequent in the US, um, but if you are at all able to have the kids purchase their own recorders, it's by far the best. So I let the kids take the recorders home. Um, I was in an affluent school my last one. Sometimes they'd buy two recorders, one for home, one for school, then it never got lost. Those who bought one recorder would keep it in their backpack. And if it was in their backpack, it would be home for them to practice. And when they came to school, it would be in the backpack, not in their desk. So they weren't doing this during math class. Um, if they forgot their recorder, I had a clean bin and a dirty bin. The dirty bin was right by the door. The clean bin was on the far side of the classroom. And they, um, they could take a recorder from the clean bin if they needed it, but I would ask them for collateral. Yeah, sometimes I forget things too, but I want to make sure you're gonna bring me, um, you're going to remember your recorder the next time. So my collateral was a shoe, I would keep their shoe until they came in at recess with their agenda and they would write a note to mom or dad saying, I forgot my recorder today in music class. Please help me to remember to keep my recorder in my backpack. And for me, it worked. Um, it wasn't always, I probably wouldn't get away with it now, but I got away with it back then. And if a fire drill happened, they went out with one sock. They wouldn't die. Okay, these recorders do clog after a certain amount of playing, and you just remove the head joint, cover the tone hole, 
with your, cover the tone hole with your hand, and then you blow it out and you wipe it out. It's just like letting the spit out of the spit valve of a trumpet. It's not really spit, it's condensation. And what I have seen the professionals do, if they're in the middle of the piece and the recorder clogs, they suck it up like that. Grosses me out to no end, but when I went to the Edmonton Recorder Society's retreat, that is how they cleared the clog. They just went like that. Yeah. <laughs> but they did it. Um, kids who don't practice. Recorder karate is the greatest idea ever to get kids practicing. My only complaint was with the actual publication, there was only seven songs. And if Barb Philippak's on, on with us today, I, I'm going to apologize to Barb for that complaint. But I think Barb agrees with me that you, your kids need to do more than seven test songs in order to become fluent readers. So I pick my test songs from the sequence. And this is the sequence, the recorder kit one, that's on Music Play Online. If you don't do Music Play Online, it's available as a kit from any music dealer or from us at Themes. So the, the first year I did seven test songs and I was testing all the time. It just did not work very well. I was only teaching at that school three days a week and I would test before school, recess, lunch, afternoon recess, after school. I even had kids come and ring my doorbell. They wanted to test so bad. They wanted those belts worse than anything that they ever desired. So the next year I cut it down to five. The year after that, I cut it down to four. It achieved the same results, but with a lot less testing. And what I ended up doing was giving the kids Tuesdays. You can come test on Tuesdays, before school, recess, noon, afternoon recess, after school, and you can test. And I would give them a date. So the white belt song, number eight, Hot Cross Buns, if they hadn't learned it or tested it for me by January the 20th, I would do it in class. But by that point, out of a class of 25 kids, there might only be five left that haven't tested ahead of time because the motivation for those belts was unbelievable. This is how you make recorder karate belts. You go to the dollar store and you buy whatever colors of yarn are the cheapest. And then you take the yarn and you wind it around the book like this. And you wind it around and around and around and around. And then when you've wound it around enough times, you go like this and you go snip and you snip at the bottom. And I now have a whole bunch of pieces of yarn this big. And when these guys pass their yellow belt te or their yellow belt test, I'm going to tie this onto the bottom of the recorder. They sometimes fall off on this particular kind of recorder and no big deal. I have a big container of this, the yarn. If it falls off, just go help yourself to another one. The kids um, know who's got their belts and who doesn't. And I make it so that everybody can get at least one belt. That's something you've got to modify for your special needs kids. So that's, again, something that we'll talk about a little bit um, because the karate system, as wonderful as it is, there are some kids who are not going to play Ode to Joy or Funga Alafia to save their lives. So let's find some alternate assignments for them that they can earn belts. Um, kids who don't read the notes, I do the note reading long before I start the recorder. So beginning of the year, um, if you are looking in the lesson for grade four music play, uh, September week one has a whole bunch of floor staff games. There is also a beautiful staff unit on music play online. There are lots of games and pop quizzes to practice note names. So I would be doing that for the three or four months before the January of the year that I want to start them. But I really um, I really do the note names and I do the rhythms ahead of time too. So if you're using the rhythm practice section at Music Play Online, you don't need flashcards, but I still like flashcards because they're quick, they're easy, and we, again, we sell those in our store. Um, hand staff, if you really focus on E, G, B, B, A, G with the hand staff, long before the kids get the recorders, they'll be better. So hold up your hand staff. Okay, the notes on the line spell every good boy just fine. So this is E, G, B, 
D, D and F. F. Okay, find the B. <laughs> there, that famous middle finger. Okay, let's do the notes in the space. The notes in the space spell your face. So we have F, F A, A, C, E. e. So can you point to B? Can you point to A? Can you point to G? So lots of hand staff practice. That could be your exit ticket for the whole of November, the whole of December. So when you get to January and start recorder, they are reading it. These are some of the note name games on Music Play Online, and they're all fun. The note name toss is the newest. Coconut Chaos goes faster and faster and faster. Um, and so if you select the BAG level, perfect for leading into the recorder. Um, the listening kits, the listening resource kits, have um, really good listening examples of recorder. If your kids never hear a real recorder, they think it only plays hot cross buns. But if you take them to Lucy Horsch on YouTube, I love this girl's play. She's a young teen and playing at a prodigy level. So Lucy Horsch is her name and your students will enjoy her as well. Um, this is a complete recorder resource kit one. At this point, I am going to veer off and go on to the website. But this is the sequence that I follow. B, A, G, then low E, then D, then C, high C, high D, then the F. And that's laid in the sequence only because so many of our teachers use Baroque fingering recorders. If I was doing all, all German, I would introduce that F sooner. And then low C at the end of the sequence. There is a debate about whether or not you should start on B, A, G, or you should start on G, E, or you should start on C, A. I have tried them all, and I've come back to B, A, G because the kids always walk in playing hot cross buns. They seem to know that um, instinctively. So I, I've just given up, and I do B, A, G regardless. Um, and, and it seems to work. I think the reason for doing the low E, the G to low E, is to involve the right hand early so that they don't reverse hands. And if you do that B, A, G, F, E, D, C, warm up with your kids every class, they're not gonna reverse their hands anyways. So it will solve that problem for you. And now we're looking at Music Play Online. So go to the Instruments section on the left menu, then go to the Recorder, and we're gonna start with Kit 1. But we might make it to some jazz pieces today, if you guys are as good as you keep going. So first, um, in the introduction to the Recorder, is where, if you scroll down, that's where you're gonna find tons of resources and tons of printables. And I have on my to-do list to redo all the introductory videos because, again, I love the recorder. I, I want everybody to love the recorder as much as I do. So here's teaching notes for the recorder section. It goes through my whole sequence. It's actually the teacher's guide that comes with the recorder kit. Here is the warm-up for the recorder. So I can pull up a PDF and have the kids, I oh, don't want that side and have the kids practice that B-A-G. Let's do it again. You did so well the first time around. Okay, here we go. And B. Awesome. A. And a G. Now the F. E. And the D. And the low C. And I guarantee you, if you do that every class that you see your kids, they are going to not reverse hands and they're going to learn, learn their notes so much quicker. So I'm going to go back to my search and we're going to start with just B. Typically what I will do with this is I'll have the kids show the fingerings in the air. So hold your recorder up with your B and now say the rhythms. One, two, say the Bs, but say them in rhythm. Ready? Go. B, 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 There's one more there. B, B. Zoom is hiding one of the notes. 
so I'll move this over a little bit so we can see. Then we would play unaccompanied. Let's do the first four measures, unaccompanied. One, two, here we go. As soon as I have real students, I remember the step that I missed. And the step that I missed was tonguing. And what I would get the kids to do for the tonguing is to say, ta, 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 tu, tu. Let's say it together in kind of a whisper. Ta, 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 tu, tu. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, 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 ta. And then when they've done that, and if they do that, when they're doing their rhythm flashcards, they will be, it, it just is an easy, easy transition. The one thing I caution is that when you're doing half notes on and you're saying them, don't ever let the kids go to, to, because that will transfer to the recorder. So have them say it gently. Two, two, let's say it together. Two, two, two. and now play that on your B. One, two, ready, go. Two, and again, ready, go. That was much nicer tonguing the second time. So you listen, you respond. That's actually at the heart of the national standards, rehearsal skills. We, um, how do you improve your performance? You improve your performance by feedback. And typically in beginning classes, that's gonna be feedback from your teacher. But if you have recorder tutors, maybe it's, uh, it's gonna be feedback from other students. Let's say this rhythm. This one is ta, ta, two. Students go ta, ta, two. Whisper it. Ta, ta, two. And play that on your A. That's two fingers. Ready? And. Okay, so that's how I teach tonguing. Now we come back to this and play it unaccompanied. Okay, so this is all Bs. One, two, ready, go. Someone's a little under pitch, and I'm not sure if it's something. I think your thumb's not covering all the way at the back. That's probably what it was. So listen, respond. One, two, here we go. And when they're doing it that well, then we add in the accompaniment track. And we've got the animated recorder with us as well. Was lovely so I'm gonna exit our full screen and we're gonna go to oh I forgot to show you this I don't have to go out I can just go to next in the instrument section so here we have just a and we are gonna play just a um, always in the air first so let's do the two and the, the toss one and for two lines ready and And then we would play. One, two, here we go. And of course, we have the gifted and talented class here, so we can play with some accompaniment. One, two, here we go.
ahead to my next song, which is going to be A and B blues. Uh, this is not a 12th bar blues, by the way. Uh, it's just in a bluesy style. And this time, let's do the fingers in the air and say the note names in rhythm because we've got to get that change to B. Ready? And A, 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 B. And I'm watching to see if they've lifted their finger for the B. B, now back to A, 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 A. Oh, you're doing nicely. A, 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 now I watch. B, 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 A, 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 A. And this really is the first time that Serge and Brian have played recorder. We're not, we're not kidding you on that. They're brand new. And we're gonna jump a step and go right to the music. One, two, here we go. two helpful things going on here. One was the um, animation. The animation will help the kids that are p potentially weaker readers. Um, and of course, the kids' notes are helping the kids that are potentially weaker readers. And I've just found over the years, kid notes are better than letting kids pencil in letter names. You let them pencil in, all they do is watch the letters under here. This way, they're seeing staff placement and they're reading the rhythms. So even if they're not 100% um, reading, they are reading. So you know what? These guys are so good. I'm going to go to change song and I'm going to go up to our belt test piece. Notice I'm skipping a whole bunch. Oh, we haven't done G yet. Okay, so we better do G first. So here comes G. And G is three fingers. It's really like having a fingering chart right there for mm -hmm. us. So three fingers and left hand at the top. You've only got one, two, you need a third one. Oh. And I'm scanning the classes. It's just so automatic. Even if I have 30 kids in there, I just watch and see if their correct fingers are on. And I would encourage them to keep the thumb under where the right hand is going to play so that it's in place. Okay, let's try this one just playing it. I'm skipping two steps here. Ready? Go. And that is beautiful. If my kids were that good, I would be amazed. Um, I've got to exit and go to Next is G and A, and I wouldn't skip this step, even with our adult beginners, so that we practice going from the A's, A, and then put a finger on for the G's, and then take it off for the A's, A's, and then the G's at the end. But we are gonna skip a bunch of steps and do it with the accompaniment. One, two, start with A. to our infamous um, hot cross buttons. So we've got another GAB piece 
and Eau Claire de la Lune is really pretty actually. And then we come to hot cross buttons and let's see if we can do this. So let's um, do everything. We're gonna read the rhythms. We're gonna say the note names in the air, just like we would in class. So okay. read rhythms first. And that's what I wanted them to get to because so often the kids go double speed when they get to this part of the song. So we're good with the rhythms. Now show me the fingers in the air. And if I was in class with the kids, I'd have them sing, but I'm not gonna ask you to sing. We're just gonna say the letter names, ready, and B, B A, G, B, A, G. And I'm scanning to make sure they're still with me. G, 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 A, 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 B, A, G. Nice job. How are we doing for time? I haven't even looked. Okay, we're going to try. Here we go. read that variation beautifully. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. Um, you will notice that underneath the song, there are resources. So the warm up is here. So if you're starting on hot cross buttons after you've taught for a couple of weeks, then you can go right to the warm up. Uh, practice bug is another method of getting kids to practice, but it's not as effective as recorded karate. Um, here's the printables for all the songs. Here's a melody composition template. Mad Minutes. I'm going to talk briefly about Mad Minutes. Okay, here's the Mad Minutes. Um, what Mad Minutes are is timed drills to name notes. And I find BAG, mm -hmm. pretty well all the kids can get it. Um, but doing the time drills helps them to develop instant recall. I don't think math teachers do this anymore, and I think our kids' math skills are dropping because of it. These time drills may produce a tiny bit of anxiety, but I encourage the kids to always compete against their best time. So I would give them the sheet and they would uh, fill it out as fast as they can. If I would generally, the first few ones that they do, this is the link, this is the PDF. Um, so this is what the PDF looks like. So the first one is BAG. There's 30 examples. I give them the answers at the beginning because I don't want kids practicing wrong notes. I'd rather have them take three minutes and practice right notes than write them in all wrong. So the kids hit hunker down, they have a pencil, they have this paper, and they name the notes as fast as they can. Your piano player's done in 22 seconds. And everybody else, after they're finished, they'll put their hand up and say, done. And I'll be timing them on my stopwatch and I'll tell them 32 seconds and they'll keep going. Next one puts her hand up, 42 seconds. Next one, a minute and 10 seconds. And they write their time in. And the idea is, Serge is a swimmer. Swimmers always try to beat their own personal mm -hmm. best. And that's the, the, the same kind of thing that I'm aiming for with these mad minutes. And to mark them, I don't collect these and grade them. I have the kids grade them themselves and I get them to do it by chanting out the names of the notes. Mm -hmm. And then if I hear a wrong answer, and you will, it'll, it'll stick out at you. Yeah. You say, I think maybe you should check that one and circle it and I'll come around and check the papers. So let's chant this first line of the Mad Minute. Ready, go. B A G A F 
Oh. You really heard my wrong note, didn't you? Um, and it does. It really, really sticks out. It's a B. It's a B. Yeah. So that one we would go back and correct. We also have some composing in here. So here we have um, ORF arrangement for hot cross buns. These ORF arrangements were written by Daphne Price from Edmonton, and they're beautiful arrangements. Um, complex, interesting. I had people asking um, after Carol of the Bells if we were going to do more instrumental ORF pieces. And the whole of Kit One has Daphne Price, beautiful ORF arrangements. And you could have the kids play these on the, on the instruments, or you could have them play the recorder with the instruments. This would be a challenge piece for most uh, fourth or fifth grade classes. Um, then I've got recorder fingering. So this is the note toss game, and there is a recorder fingering game that comes in. I, I, what note is that? A. I forgot about this. This one is a G. This is a G. This is an A. Um, composing with BAG in 3-4. So I would have the kids write their own BAG compositions. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get you to improvise using BAG and we're going to do it together. All three of us. It's going to clash and sound kind of weird, but we're going to try it. Ready? Go. Even with three, it's already driving me nuts. Um, <laughs> I generally will save recorder composition until our weather is nice enough to take the kids outside. And they love their outdoor music classes, and I love having them compose outside instead of in my class. But what I would encourage is that you get kids to try improvising. So I'm going to play a measure, you echo. And then you go around the room and you have everybody improvise and we echo. So you get to make up four beats and we'll echo you. And then Serge gets. That's good for the ears. It's good practice for them. So every new note that you introduce, get your kids to improvise and echo, echo, improvise. Keep the creative juices flowing. Um, I remember we had a composition contest. Roland Canada had a composition contest. And if you won it, you got this big fancy keyboard and some composition stuff. And you got famous because you were in the Roland Canada magazine. So I got every kid in my school to write something. And my little, little ones did a rhythm composition. And they wrote it out. And my band students, my grade sixes, would do a simple composition using notes they know. I get to my high school kids, and I will never forget Murray Weinkoff. He says, Miss Gagne, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in school because I had never had him compose for his trumpet. He'd had music put in front of him, he'd played it, but I'd never asked him to make up his own melody. So, yeah, my band kids composed melodies, and I think they grew and stretched um, because of it. So, you guys have earned your yellow belts in recorder. You've played hot cross buttons successfully and sight red successfully. So, I'm going to tie this on here. <laughs> I'm going to try it. I should stop sharing because this is funny. I'm having a very hard time tying the yellow belt onto the end of the recorder. Okay. So, there's the yellow belt. They've earned their yellow belt in recorder karate. It's considerably less painful than real karate, correct, Brian? Correct. <laughs> um, so if we have time yet, and we have a few minutes, I want to share some of the other recorder resources that we have, aside from the kits, which are sequential and, um, and really good 
teaching material. So I'm going to go back into my search and I'm going to go to Recorder Kit 2. This is for two-part recorder and optional alto. And I've transposed the alto so that if you want to uh, just hand kids an alto recorder and have them play it with soprano fingerings, you can. But notice here the sequence. We review everything that they've done in kit one before we go on. And then all of a sudden they get to Old Brass Wagon and we add an F sharp. Um, I always tell, if you wanna teach how to play F sharp, put on F, add two fingers, take away F. And it's, an, it's actually not that hard to teach them. Kit two, I did with my fifth grade. Kit one, I did with my fourth. And I would start in January every year. Another beautiful, collection of resources we have is the Blues Cats recorder and they are sequential so the easiest one is going to be number one cats meow and it uses B-A-G. Are you up for this? Yep, sure. Okay let's give it a try. <clears throat> so it's going to go B-G-A-G. -G. It's going to go too fast. Here's our eight bars. Okay, that was amazing for the first time with recorders in hands. Um, but I'm going to go to the speed gear wheel tool and I'm gonna slow it down a little. And of course that is the handiest thing ever. Let's go three quarter speed. Measure nine. And they are doing awesome on this. Yeah, that's amazing. That gear wheel tool is going to make this very doable for your own students. So that's the Blues Cats. I really love the Jazz Cats. And the Jazz Cats, again, is great. I'm going to go to Dixie Cat. And in this one, opportunities to improvise, which again, really good for kids. And I should probably slow it down for our beginners. We haven't learned this yet, it's E. <laughs> But if I kept going with this, there is an opportunity to improvise, which is... And you can see, they're just anxious to get in there and try it out too. You're gonna have to go home with your recorders now and get on Music Play Online and try it out. Um, if you are using Music Play Online, Make sure you've gone to the dashboard, generated your student code. First time you come in here, it says generate my student code. And then once you've generated it, it embeds automatically in links. So if I want to give the kids a particular piece that they can play at home, I can go to Jazz Cats and I can go, I should probably have done Dixie, Dizzy's BAG first. But now I can copy that link and you can see my code embeds. So I can put that in a Google slide or I can put that in an email and the kids can practice it at home. This is what they see when they come on. I'm gonna copy the link and I need to access as a student because I'm using student code. And there's my student code already there, access some fun. And it does go to Dizzy's BAG. So I'm gonna stop sharing and ask for your questions. I would love to have your questions about this. And thank you so much to Serge that was fun. and to Brian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk about learning how to play the recorder <laughs> under pressure. <laughs> so what questions do you have for me? How many tries do you get? How many tries do you get to get a belt? I wouldn't limit it. Um, I would, oh. We haven't talked about modification for special needs kids. I had a little boy um, with Down syndrome in my music classes, and he was with me right from kindergarten 
to fifth grade when he went on to middle school. And obviously, he didn't have the fine muscle coordination to play anything more than one note songs. He could play just B, he could play just A, he could play just B, but then he was lost. So I would make up for Torin a tub of unpitched instruments and he would play the rhythms along with the other kids in the class. And they, the, the kids in the class sometimes would say, can I play with Torin today? And great, if they forgot the recorder, they would play with Torin. And they, um, they really enjoyed it and he was, uh, uh, a member of that, the class community. So for Torrance belt tests, that's what he did. He played it on the unpitched instruments. Um, and I'm pretty generous. I mean, if they are trying their level best and they have practiced, I'm not going to be super strict with them. Our kids have come through two years of horrible educational experiences, and I would be doing everything to encourage them to keep going. And so I'd say, you know, like maybe if it wasn't 100% perfect, I'd say, you know what? You're doing really well. I saw all the right fingerings. Work on this, work on this. Here's your belt. How many class periods do you do recorders for? So I would start recorders in January and I would do it roughly till Easter. Generally it worked out for about 12 weeks, but I had my kids more often than many people do. I had my kids twice a week. Some years, I'd get them three times a week. So on twice a week for 30 minutes, I would do recorders at the beginning, kind of at the beginning of the unit, it takes up your whole, your whole period. And then after a couple of weeks, I would start cutting it back. And I would do 20 minutes of recorder, 10 minutes of singing and singing games. And then after three or four weeks, 15 minutes of recorder, 15 minutes of singing and singing games. I don't want them not singing and playing instruments and moving to, to learn an instrument. Um, in middle school, yes. In elementary school, I think it's really important that we keep those kids moving and doing things. There's other ways of teaching recorder that you sort of integrate it into your ORF type lessons. I'm a former band teacher having the kids do the same things at the same time worked for me. I can't imagine, um, I know people talk about it, where they have their kids doing different pieces in different corners of the room. All I can think of when I hear that is headache. I want my kids to kind of stay in the same place. If I had kids that were really, really good, I would sometimes give them uh, books of Disney pieces. I've got other, these are some of the other pieces we've got. We've got um, holiday songs for the recorder. This is now on the website as well. But, you know, give them something harder to play. And those advanced kids, I would let them go out in the hallway and practice. Um, or if we could find a storage closet or someplace that wouldn't disturb classes around them, I would let them go out and play. Nice weather, they can go outside. Those of you who live in Florida or in Georgia or Texas, if, you're, if you've got an outdoor, a, a door to the outside, you could send your kids outside to practice that are really, really good and you work with the struggling ones. Another way that I would do this is by setting up centers and setting up the center so that one group is playing, one group's practicing note names, one group's practicing note name games on the, comp on the iPads or on the computer, and one small group is playing with me. And that way the noise level wouldn't be so horrific. Um, the reason that the, the recorders you know, make dogs howl is because it plays an octave higher than it's written. So when I play a C here, it's written as middle C, but it sounds an octave higher. So when I go to the C above, it's C2 that's sounding. And it's, it is, it, I mean, it does make dogs howl. I, I've heard it. And you know, you get the parents that say, well, yeah, I'll let my kid practice um, as long as they're in the car, in the garage. <laughs> you know, we've all, we've all heard the stories. And until the kids get a little better, the practicing can be a little painful to listen to. How many songs do you do per class? Uh, that's really going to depend on the class. If you've got a class like this, <laughs> I'm going to do three or four or five songs. I would make sure I do that warm up. I would make sure I review the notes that they already know. 
do some echoes, mm-hmm. do some improv- improvisation. So other things are just as important as mastering songs. Songs are not the only thing that we that we want them to do. Um, we have a publication, and we haven't put it online yet. I'm not saying we won't, but recorder fingering flashcards. And I would put these on the wall as the kids learn the notes. And then you review those every class, and they um, those are the, the notes that you would echo, that you would improvise with before you go on to the songs. Okay, I see another question. What was the third floor staff activity? Please show where the recorded warm-up chart is again. Do I copy a packet for every student? Um, I don't because we have these little books published and for $3, I don't have to do any photocopying. It's it's wonderful. Um, I know West Music and probably Music in Motion and maybe Plank Road Publishing in the States also sell recorder packages with these. We sell them for $10. If you don't have, if your kids can't do that, then by all means, make a packet of the recorder songs. I've split them up because not everybody gets past BAG with their kids. It's a reality that if you're in a tough school and your kids are low, they're not better after the pandemic, then um, just copy the BAG songs and sort of add to the packet as they go on. But I, yeah, I've used those books now for lots and lots of years. So floor staff, I will show you where the floor staff games are on Music Play Online. So if I go into units, this is the easiest place to find it. Games and centers, floor staff games, right here. And this has tons of them. And um, some really, we've actually, I think, got some really cute pictures of those. In the games section is where you'll find all the actual note name games. A recorder assessment. Yes, I believe there is, and I think it will be in that introduction to the recorder in kit one. There's just a million PDFs in there, so look for the assessment one. And is it in the recorder unit? Yes, it should be, and if it doesn't, um, we should have it there. Can I talk about Poison Recorder? Poison Recorder is played just the same as Poison Melody, only you do it with recorder melodies. And I haven't done this with kids yet, so I am not the expert. When I go in and teach my twins, I will try this and then I can speak with a whole lot more authority. But here is the Poison Recorder. So here's Poison Recorder with just B and A. And let's go full screen. There are some measures in music that really make me mad. I guess that's how I got my name. If you'd be so kind as not to play the measure you see on the next slide, I would be so grateful and so much happier. It may show up more than once. So this is the poison measure. Let's play it together. It's A, B, B, A. Ready? Yeah. So if you play it, you'll take a hike. So ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. You just got poisoned. (laughs) So if you played it, no, no, no. (laughs) That is how you play Poison Recorder. And I haven't actually seen it before today um, with with people. And so that is uh, going to be lots of fun for your kids and a really effective way to get them to practice those easy patterns without feeling like it's drill, drill, drill. Thank you so much for sticking with us. We're over time by seven minutes. I really appreciate all of you joining me. So thank you, everybody. And um, I hope you have a really, really wonderful 2023. Less stress than last year, more fun. And I'm so happy that we're able to play recorders again. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. If you would like to earn a PD certificate for this episode, download the accompanying handout or watch the webinar, please go to workshops.musicplay.ca. See you next time. time.